una y dos y dos una y dos Hello and welcome to Cortez NYC Livestream, the podcast. This show broadcasts twice a week out of New York City. We are your hosts, Cortez NYC. And Carla de Puerto Rico. And on the show, we talk about art, creativity, city life. From a Latino perspective, I'm a visual artist. And I'm a singer. And this is episode 47. As always, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and Spotify, and also on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. And don't forget my online store, CortezNYC.BigCartel.com. You can find stickers, posters, pins, and original art for sale. So go there, log in, and help support an artist. And also, we'll be on the Patches and Pins Expo NYC this Saturday, October 13th from 12 to 7. So we hope to see you there. Come through and get your pins. And a quick couple of shout outs. Some people have reposted from the Mosa Bowery uh, art exhibit that we're having down at the Citizen M Hotel. Uh, a couple of shout outs to Sushi X Ninja, XBMC underscore NYC, Museum of the Streets, Joanne Beth P. Dot. And shout out to the people at the Mount, at the Mosa Bowery. That's uh, Marie and Mears. Shout out to you guys. And if you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. Google search Mosa Bowery. M-O-S-A. All right. We're back, right, Carla. We're right, back. We're back. What? Woohoo! After watching Colombia versus USA, we are energized. After having uh, tamarind margaritas. <laughs> Two of them, yeah. <laughs> and some wine. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So watching Colombia beat USA 4-2. to two, That was nice. That was good. That was good. A nice, um, yeah. Right? Re-energy. Yeah, yeah. Re- definitely. Re-energize, yeah. Uh, and it was a good game. They bo- both, both sides had good goals. Yeah. I think both sides had, had bad defense, though. So. Yeah, for sure. Both sides had pe- like but they were very relaxed. They were a little too relaxed. Yeah, both sides. Yeah. After the second half, they're starting to, to like strand, strand it up. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> in the background here, we still got Mexico and Costa Rica playing. Yeah. So we'll see. They're still we'll zero see, we'll zero. See. <laughs> um, all right. So for this episode, I wanted to talk about um, a new little figure that I, a new drawing tool that I came across that I really enjoy and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and it's called Body Kun. Body and then K-U-N. Um, it's, a, it's a little mannequin. I'll, I'll, I'll call it a drawing mannequin mm-hmm. or an art mannequin. Basically, it's a small figure, like, like, a, like a small action figure um, to practice drawing, you know, the human figure in different poses. Yeah. Um, I, I think if I, if I would have come across this, you know, tool... When I was in high school, I would have been so excited. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's that's the years that I really could have used it. Because it, it, it actually is a really, really well-made um, drawing mannequin. Right, because um, at, at that time when you were in high school, I'm guessing the ones that you had were very simple, uh, no movement at all. They were dumb. They were just... Uh, just for you to draw whatever. Just it, basically what it was for is to give you an idea. Mm-hmm. To have an idea. To have an idea of... Uh, the, the proportions of a figure yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to kind of visualize what a human being would look like yeah um standing in front of you yeah it wasn't for anatomy no, no. it was you know you thought it was but it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't for anything more than just a, a visualization tool um and so they were yeah the wooden the basic wooden mannequins is what we had back in the day mm-hmm. in high school and and i think back then what i would have you know I, that's when you're learning to draw so to have a, a tool like this these like such detailed little sculptured super detailed uh, they look plastic like, figures they look like barbies in a way or, right like miniature barbies or yeah or cans or whatever yeah, yeah. those types but of but they're muscular figures. also they they're there's two kinds i'll talk about the two kinds yeah, of figures yeah. that they are but they're they have anatomy they're muscular and everything and and they they have a lot of different joints so you can really put a lot of different poses on them if you see if you if you guys that are on instagram if you just search on instagram body kun B O D Y K U N, you're gonna see people take pleasure in, in taking photos of these guys. Yeah, that's and super put, cool. Yeah, and putting them in poses, and they look they look real, like yeah. they look believable. They look very <laughs> animated because they're so detailed. Um, but so all right, so let me rewind. Let's go back. Let's go back in time when okay. you're learning to draw. Back in my day, 
So all we had as an option was this little wooden, very basic, you know, it's a circle, it's a cylinder, it, you know, the hands are big flat sh half circles. Just a real basic shape of a, of a human anatomy mannequin. Uh, they had ones that were about, I don't know, like six inches tall or something like that. Yeah. Um, and they were, they had some basic spring motion. So they had some basic joints and they had some basic spring motion. So you could kind of like stretch the arms out and kind of get an idea of the, of the pose. Mm -hmm. But um, it was, it was, you know, teachers would tell us to draw from those and they would tell us that that was a good tool to visualize and all that. I never got into it. I, I tried to draw from it and I would just, I would get bored because it was, it's such a weird shape. It didn't look anything like a person to me. Yeah. And at that, at that age, you know, I, I'm talking about in the 80s, we already had like little action figures mm -hmm. like, like G.I. Joe or Star Wars or things like that. So, and these figures already had more detail because they had facial expressions and things. So there was already other things for us to draw from that were more detailed than these art mannequins. Yeah. Um, I think that's what made that's what made those mannequins not useful. Um, then now, you know, you know, moving forward. I, I mean, back then, I, then I, you would go to art museums and you would draw from actual sculptures that had more detail and all that. But obviously, you're just working from whatever poses they have. Um, but now I come across this thing. Um, actually, I, I just decided to search online and, and see what was available as far as like drawing figures because. Um, my son is developing his drawing skills and I figured it'd be nice to get some some figures that he can draw from. And I figured by now there would be something new. And lo and behold, there you go. They had something called Bodykun. Uh, again, B-O-D-Y-K-U-N. I know it sounds weird in English, but Bodykun. Yeah. And then the other one is Japan Art Figma Archetype is what it's called. F-I-G-M-A Archetype. And... That's another figure. So the Figma archetype, they're both and the body con, they're both about the same size. They're about, I think they're about like five inches or something like that tall. Um, but the body con is a little slicker, mm -hmm. and uh, like the the figure is very slender, mm -hmm. um, and the musculature is kind of simple. The the motion is really good. But what I like about the Bodycon better than the other one, the Figma archetype, is the structure. It's it's better built. Uh -huh. the, the the parts don't fall apart as easy. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more rugged. You can play with it a little more and pose it um, better than the other one, the archetype. So the Figma archetype is the one that is a little more muscular. The build, it looks like a superhero, like an action figure. It's like a Superman posing in front of you. Mm -hmm. And the plastic is a little lighter weight. And... But the joints come off easier. I, I noticed that when you start to pose it, the, the arms can pop off easy and you got to pop them back in and all that. So you got to be very delicate when you're repositioning the, the, the arms and the legs and everything. Um, they're interesting because they come with different hands. So you can replace the hands. You can have closed fist, open open hand. Uh, the the um, I'm sure they have kits. I, be, I believe online they probably have kits where they give you other hands and like yeah, yeah. they even have like guns or swords you could give them stuff like that basically i think the origin of these figures is that a, a toy company who makes action figures already like for for um like um manga type yeah. of you know japanese magazines and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, anime kind of themed characters they make these action figures already and i guess they decided to use some of the extra body parts and make a mannequin as yeah. a drawing tool yeah um but just clean with no no painting no um no clothing or anything like that and uh, and to sell it and see if they would make money and, and i think it's a great tool yeah it works yeah it actually works really well um i actually saw the um, the figma archetype actually comes in different colors there, i think there's a, a bright orange one and then there's a flesh colored one hmm. and the other one the the body con comes in gray I think it comes in gray and flesh and in black, I think. Mm. Like a jet black. Um, but these are really cool tools. I mean, I've been I've been getting kicked out of it. I'm going to post some, some drawings that I did with it, um, posing them in different positions and everything. Yeah. They also have females and males. That's the other thing. Yeah. They have male and female figures. So if... And if, also mus muscular, both of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the archetype they have... The Figma archetype makes a muscular female pose yeah. character yeah. that is more like a Wonder Woman kind of Wonder. body. Yeah. And then the other one, Bodycon, has body, I think it's 
Body Chan, I think it's called. Body Chan is the girl. Yeah. Figure. It's funny because it looks just like the manga uh, characters, female characters right. of, of a manga magazine or, or comic. Yeah, the the Body Chan ones definitely do, and they they um the girl characters they have two types. They have one that is more like the mag manga um like sexy girl yeah like with the big boobs and the yeah. big hips and and very small waist and, and extremely small hands and extremely yeah. small shoulders and then they have a more action type of female figure pose um uh, mannequin that that is a little the proportions are a little more like an action figure um and and those are those are really good too i mean that's that's really good um so i mean when you're looking for things to draw from you know i've been telling people for a long time you know the best thing you could do is if you're a, a toy collector or if you have toys and, and little figurines draw from that mm -hmm. um i think that's that's what i did when i was a kid i used to draw my toys and that helped a lot in my drawing from direct observation yeah but if you're not a toy collector other options that i would suggest obviously go to a museum and look at sculptures um buy sculptures mm -hmm. you know if you're not into toys you can always still buy little sculptures maybe small small sizes yeah like like go you know every once in a while go to a thrift shop go to mm -hmm. go to somewhere where you can get things for cheap and look at what they have as far as like little sculptures little figurines yeah. things like that and, and just buy some random things that grab your attention and practice drawing from that um you know that a good store that was a toy store that was good for these kind of items was the store that was in Fifth Avenue, uh, the big toy store. I don't remember the name right now, but it was in Fifth uh, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. And they will sell the little figurines that it was different characters. You have the gorilla, almost yeah, like yeah. a King Kong. They were a little pricey, but yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah they had a, a whole You'll bunch. You have like dragons and different characters yeah. that you can draw. And that was pretty cool. And they were very detailed. For it to be just a small figurine, maybe a small sculpture, yeah. but they had color, they were detail um, uh, expressions, yeah. and it was really cool that. But yeah, but I, I mean, even even if you get into, um, you know, get like going to like um, like deck like places where they sell home decorations. Yeah. Sometimes you'll find in there little sculptures and things that you'd be surprised mm -hmm. you know are are worth buying and, and taking home and drawing Your i mean michaels <laughs> right or even like a michaels let's say yeah michaels yeah. has a bunch of things like that <laughs> obviously yeah um the other option that is something that i do recommend that has been recommended to me and i would recommend to other people i've tried it a couple of times and i think it works um it's just a little more work for you is for you to buy some clay and sculpt something yourself mm. and then draw from that yeah and that's actually the best thing that you could do but you you know it takes the more energy for you to go and start sculpting yourself more time too yeah but but, it, but if you are looking to um practice your drawing and if you want to practice your own style of drawing more than let's say learning how to draw something else that was made by somebody else then the best way is by making it yourself yeah. you know if you make your own sculpture you sculpt your own faces or figures or whatever even if they're not permanent because you know that you're only going to do it for drawing so if you're only going to do it for a quick sketch you could even take a photo of it let's say and then save that photo and use that as reference later but but um it doesn't have to be permanent sculpt you know some people don't want to get into you know sculpting like something permanent and, and you know something like they don't see themselves as sculptors you yeah. know um then just get some regular clay that doesn't dry and, and just sculpt something you know make take some time and do some interesting um armature of a, of a figure and then sculpt on top of it and, and practice your own style of anatomy and your own style of drawing from that i think that helps um another thing that i've tried um is like let's say for you guys out there that do graffiti pieces is um drawing drawing cutting out pieces of ge like geometric shapes and things like that mm -hmm. and drawing from that Dr drawing like things that are very geometric and like cubes and triangles and shapes um almost like origami right um mm -hmm. uh, but sketching from that i think that's that's another way for you to practice drawing something in front of you that is a sculptural item in a little more abstract way 
you know, getting away from figures, but getting more into like just practicing drawing something that's in front of you. Right. That's another way of doing it, especially because we probably have a lot of people out there that are into graffiti into and lettering and things like that. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. that's, you know, if the figures aren't your thing, maybe that's something you could practice is taking paper and making it into the geometric shapes and then sketching the lighting, the shadows and all that from that is a way of practicing your drawing with some sort of model in front of you. Um, but these figures are definitely still, even though they're very detailed, they're still not really anatomically perfect. They're not anatomically mm -hmm. correct. Um, when you're, they're, they're really for concept only. They're, yeah. they're just to kind of, again, still to visualize, but it's just helping you because it's so much more detailed that it helps you visualize it even easier. But it's not realistic like, like drawing a real person. Um, you, you can still see that the figure, even though it's posable, it, it doesn't stand or, or, or it doesn't have gravity the way a human being would have gravity. Um, the anatomy is exaggerated. The joints are exaggerated, obviously, the, you know, because they have to make the toy move. So they have to have these big circular joints. So when you're drawing that, you have to, if you're trying to make it realistic, you have to compensate for that and, and pretend like those joints aren't there. Um, but if you're drawing realistically, you're gonna, re you know, you're gonna realize that it, there's nothing better than drawing from the real human, you know, in front of you. Yeah. That would be the best exercise. Um, I think I also saw. Yeah, I did. I saw. Um, I think under the body, the body con uh, figures, mm -hmm. under that category, I saw figures that were small. Like bot, like baby proportion, like toddler proportion. Oh, really? You know, like so you could have those cute little figures with the big giant heads and yeah. the small bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a posable one for that kind of body proportion. <laughs> That's so, funny. so if you're into drawing like the the like little, cartoons, the cartoon characters yeah. with the big heads and the little bodies, they also make a posable one for that kind of body type, which is interesting because I never thought of that. Like, yeah. I always thought of like you're trying to find something that's going to be as realistic as possible to real human anatomy mm -hmm. and i remember coming across that and that was interesting they yeah, have wait. those they have those monies also the the money um like the kid robot i don't, I don't know if you've probably seen it but you don't know what it is but it's small figures they're not posable they only move maybe their arms um and they're there's they're short little figures but those are also good for drawing if you want to draw simple figures because you can light it a certain way and kind of like render the the shadows and all that and they're, since it's such basic forms, it's easier to, to sketch from. Yeah, and, and if you're into cartoons and characters from there, you can maybe develop your own. Exactly. And uh, that'll be super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I guess also if you want to draw, like you were saying earlier, if you want to draw like all kinds of creatures like that, that we saw in the store, that they yeah. had like skeletons and eagles and dragons and lions and tigers and, mm -hmm. and elephants. Yeah, that, that's, there's no way around it. Go to a toy store. If you need little figures that you yeah. want to practice anatomy, practice animals from, they're not going to be anatomically perfect, but they will give you an idea. Yeah. Go to a toy store and just look at what they have for, for like, uh, you know, animals, zoo animals, dinosaurs, things like that, and, and practice using some of those. Exactly. That's another way to go about it. Um, I think some of the, the funniest things that I've seen, I've seen in... in, in I've seen giant ones in uh, the wooden ones. Uh huh. I've seen those in stores. Like, I, it's like uh, big sizes. Giant size, like giant size, like your size. Oh wow. Mannequins, and they're mannequins. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That at that point, it's, it's a not. <laughs> it's, it's to dress. It's to. It's to, you know. It's a display yeah, item. Yeah, yeah. But I've seen it. I've seen the displays using the art mannequins as, as the mannequins. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. Mm hmm Um, and that I guess that would be interesting. You know, to see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to draw from that, that'd be kind of cool. Um, all right, yeah. But so those are those. Those are the types. Uh, Archetype by Figma, and Bodycon is the other one. Excuse the funny sounding name, but that's what it's called. It's called Bodycon. <laughs> um, go check it out. Practice your drawing. I'm gonna post some of the sketches that I've done, and let's keep going. Separa menos tiempo. Un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, dos, dos. Culture talk. Culture talk. Really? <laughs> so on this culture talk, um, we wanted to give you some 
uh, we, got, we wanted to recommend you some Latino restaurants in New York City. Yes. We know we have a lot of listeners in the New York City or tri-state area, but we also have a lot of listeners all over the United States. So we wanted to let you know some Latino restaurants that maybe you can visit when you're in the city. Yeah. Or if you haven't been, maybe you can go and try new plates. It's delicious and you're going to love it. Yeah, I mean, this is we're not a, a food podcast or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, so these are not like our Yelp review exactly, or anything. These, exactly. are not, these are not restaurants that are reviewed well or, or, you know, that anybody has said anything about in the media or anything. That These are just places that we always go to. Mm -hmm. And then we realized, hey, maybe somebody out there is, you know, is, is curious about, you know, going to eat some Spanish food and they, they actually want to have something that's recommended. Yeah. A, you know, a, a good local place. And the places that we're picking are places because we're always in Manhattan. So yeah. there are places in Manhattan. The places, places in, in Queens. Manhattan, in Queens, and we have one uh, downtown, but it's uh, right, that we discovered. Manhattan. Yeah. All right, Carla, go through your list. Let's go. Let's hear okay, this. Okay, so the first one is called Casa Adela. Casa Adela. So this one, I actually did discover it through social media on Facebook. I saw this kind Already of... Already broke the rules. I know, exactly. <laughs> but I gotta say it. Okay. So you guys can see it and maybe you'll find it inspired and then you will go to a restaurant. Um, I found this like documentary slash series on Facebook that is called In Your Hood. And uh, it was featuring Casadela, which is a Puerto Rican authentic restaurant. But it's a, a very small restaurant of just five tables. And when you go in, uh, if you go on a day that is very busy, like a Sunday or a Saturday, you have to be aware that the waiting time will be maybe an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, that was ridiculous. And um, that place is super tiny. Yeah, and I think that's the challenges that they're having because this video went viral. Everybody was uh, sharing it, not only... And I'm sure not only people in the community, but all over New York and all over the United States were watching at this video. Uh, now it's getting very popular. And I think the only problem is that if you get there, let's say after seven, eight, nine, and that's the time you get into the restaurant, you sit down to eat, some of the items they don't have anymore. So let's say so I want it. Are you recommending or are you telling on them? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're recommending. and I. I, I would say, I I don't know if I could recommend it in a great way. I mean, I'm recommending. What? I'm recommending because what I'm saying is go early. I'm trying to give you the hints. Don't go late at night. Um, if okay, you so go, it's got limitations. But okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you recommend? Let's start there. Okay, so I recommend it because the food is delicious. I think that is. Uh, the most authentic mofongo I've, I have eaten in New York, okay. for real. Okay. Uh, the seasoning of the mofongo, the seasoning of that little caldito que ellos tienen for the mofongo is really good. Um, the food really tastes as if your grandmother, your Puerto Rican grandmother made it or your Puerto Rican mother made it. Okay. And that's something that is really authentic. So if you want to try, if you haven't tried Puerto Rican food at all, this is a good place to start because it is an authentic version of Puerto Rican food in New York. Okay, I agree with that. Um, growing up in New York, aside from from going, having occasionally come across like s small Spanish places th that are Puerto Rican or Dominican that sell maybe some rice and beans and some chicken. Yeah. No specific type of sazon, just right. generic Spanish you know that Latino, you find everywhere yeah, anywhere uh seasoning and stuff like that um you know aside from that i don't recall really coming across specifically a puerto rican restaurant that i could say i recommend yeah there was um there was one time we went to one that was uh like trying to be high cuisine type of puerto rican yeah that was in soho yeah i forgot the name of it it was like sofrito or something regarding yeah. I can't remember the name, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was, it was like X, I wouldn't recommend that one because it was extra. It was like trying to be more than it should have been. Mm -hmm. Um, the prices were kind of high and mm -hmm. the, and the food was, was still tasted like, like, like any other any Latino other restaurant yeah. out there. Right. 
So I, I agree. I agree. Casa de la, it's small. It's got it's, its challenges. It has its challenges. Is it worth it? I think if, if you're curious about an actual authentic New York Rican, mm-hmm. you know, kind of restaurant, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's worth it, but it's got its challenges. It's very small. Yeah, yeah. They don't sell alcohol. It's, it's bring your own. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's BYOB, bring your own bottle. Yeah. So you can bring your own bottle, let's say a bottle of wine or whatever, or they beer. They'll charge you for it. And they'll charge you for uncorking it. Mm-hmm. I guess if you bring beer, they might charge you for putting it in the fridge or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and holding it while you drink it. Yeah. But um, to taste some Puerto Rican food is good. Yeah, the prices are e- not bad. It doesn't really exist outside of that place. I haven't really seen too much of that no, in New York. No, not really. You know, you you can like, again, you can come across your your corner bodega that might also sell some food. Yeah. But it's not the way but these guys being, are doing it. Being in the Manhattan area. Uh, it is a challenge to find Puerto Rican food. So being in Manhattan, that's a good option because if not, obviously you can go to the Bronx right. and you can find Puerto Rican food, but that's, uh, you know, you have to travel a little bit. <laughs> so right. yeah. And so this is down in yeah. the Lower East Side. This mm-hmm. is down in Alphabet City. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was good. It, it was, was good. good. It I was just, good. for me, the challenges don't allow me to really yeah, get too I crazy know. about it. All I right. Know. What's the next one on your list? So that okay. was Casa de la. What's Casa the next one? Casa de la, go there. Next one is... Guantanamera. Guantanamera is good. That's that's my spot. Guantanamera is in Manhattan by near Columbus Circle. Yeah, it's near up, 59th Street. Yeah, it's up by 59th Street, like Midtown. Um, it's a Cuban restaurant. Um, it's awesome. The food is delicious. It has um, live music on. I believe it's maybe from Thursday to Sunday. Right. If you guys uh, go go online, Guantanamera NYC, you go online, check yeah. them out. They they have like a, a basic calendar of like when they have the music and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's really good because you have your um, very authentic as well Cuban cuisine. And I think a plate that I would recommend is Ropa Vieja. They made it delicious with this um, combination between the maduros and the platanos and the and the green plantains yeah. and the meat and the rice. Everything is delicious every time we go. Uh, they have delicious mojitos as well. Yeah, the drinks are great. The the desserts are the great. The desserts, the tres leches, and the, the flan. flan and the um, and the service. And the service is great. The service is always There's good. Always I've on never point. had a bad. Yeah. I've never had a bad experience there. You always find a table. Yeah. We, we usually try to make a reservation, but we, we'll show up with no reservation, and we've always been able to find a table yeah, yeah. any time of the night. And If you go with a group, uh, with a big group, though, make sure to make a reservation because that's when it gets challenging. And, and it does get crowded. Yeah, it gets crowded. It gets crowded. People start dancing because mm-hmm. they have live music. Mm-hmm. Um, always a different group playing. Yeah. And... And the um, they used to ha- I don't know if they always I don't know if they still do it but they have hand rolled cigars in the front. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they still do it though. I, I've seen that they still have it there, but I don't know. I haven't seen it in action, so yeah. I don't I don't know. Um, but and the prices for Man- for a Manhattan restaurant, the prices are not bad at all. No, no, it's good. The prices are pretty good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a good one. Guantanamera. Guantanamera is always a good place to go, have a good time, enjoy some Latino music. And just, you know, be able to embrace Latino culture. Google search it. Yeah. And then we go to Queens. To La Pequeña Colombia, which is in Jackson Heights, Roosevelt Avenue. Um, And this is a Colombian restaurant. Um, It's really good as well. You find your Colombian plates, bandeja paisa, bandeja montañera. And it's delicious. Um, I feel the service is also really good. Yeah, they're good. And the plates are big. So if you order a bandeja yeah. paisa or any type of bandeja, when it says bandeja, it means like a whole tray. Yeah, like a whole of, tray. Of, yeah. of, of, of plate. I mean, it's, oh, it's, food. it's a plate, but they, you know, all, a lot of these places, well, well, Colombian places specifically. Colombian, you go to a Colombian place yeah. and, and they exaggerate the plate's mm-hmm. size. You yeah. Know, they'll, They'll give you a plate that you can share with two people. Yeah. Easily. Um, but I think La Pequeña Colombia is, 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 I don't know if their details, but I know that they've been there forever. Yeah. And they have a long history in Jackson Heights. And it started off as a small restaurant and then expanded bigger and then went further back. Um, 
to the point where now when you walk in it's like a really big it establishment feels, yeah. yeah it feels almost like a place where you can make a reception for a wedding yeah it, it feels like a salon type of place yeah that now it's a restaurant i remember the last time that we went there we went with we stopped over there with Rezo. Oh, yeah. He was here from Spain. And yeah, then we yeah. had the paella and all that. And yeah. the seafood, it was like a seafood platter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I the food that. kept coming. And we were all like, oh my oh God. My God so much food. <laughs> food. Yeah, it was incredible. It was a good time. And, and it wasn't that pricey because it's in Queens. And they, again, like we said, they, the plates are, he, the serving size is huge. Mm -hmm. So you're spending good money, but, but you're getting a lot. Yeah, you know, you're yeah, getting a lot getting of food. So of if, you, if you want to eat well, yeah, I would yeah. recommend that always. That's an easy one. That's in Jackson Heights, Queens. Yeah. And then continuing in the Queens area, we go to El Basurero. Oh, uh, yeah. That's in... A, which is in Astoria. Astoria on Steinway. In Steinway Street. Yeah. Um, El Basurero is a cool place to go. It's very... Uh, the decorations are very interesting when you go. Yeah. Um, El Basurero translates to the trash can or the trash... El Basurero is like the... It's like the... Like a, like a junkyard the junk yeah exactly. it's like a junkyard yeah because that's what it is that's what the decorations like it's got everything mm -hmm. everything you can imagine mm -hmm. like at a thrift shop a colombian thrift shop would have yeah you know you got a car sticking out of the ceiling you have flags and chairs and and know. everything is all around the ceiling and everything else yeah so it's really cool um the food as well is humongous those plates are really re i think this is the biggest um, plates that I've seen in a Colombian restaurant. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's it's really big. El, the the el basurero. The only thing about el basurero is that the basurero. I've been there for games. Yeah, for yeah. For soccer games, and I've been there for music. Mm -hmm. Right. So on a regular night, it might be okay, mm -hmm. but on the busy nights, yeah, it's it's busy. Yeah, yeah. And and the, that's where the service begins to slip a little bit because it's really busy. It's really hectic. Yeah. Um, the food is is good. I yeah. can't say it's great. Mm -hmm. I I don't think that it, it you know it, it's just a lot and it's just filling and it's good. Yeah, it's really the same. But it's like, nothing. It's nothing that you're gonna really look at and be like, well, is this you know how is it cooked and how yeah, is, this you know, is not really for the food. It's more for the environment and having the experience. Yeah. Of being in in a type of place that is like that, the the decorations and everything else. Yeah. So then... So that's El Basurero. Guys, Google search it. Yes. And then we go to El Patron. El Patron is a good one. That's one of my favorites too. Oh. It's kind of like a and Mexican slash Colombian slash all over Latino restaurant. Yeah. Um, overall, uh, it's really good. It's in Northern Boulevard in Flushing. And uh, what I like about it are the frozen margaritas in those tequila yeah. containers that yeah, are like cool. mini tequila containers, but they're full of frozen margarita. So you can imagine that after a night out there eating and, and drinking. drinking your margarita, you're going to end up drunk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that restaurant tries to be a little elevated, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's still good prices the, the quantity is still good yeah um they, you know they have their music and the ambiance in the background they have tv screens but but um there it's a restaurant there it's really about the food and the service yeah um you know and the presentation of the food and all that it's it's really good that yeah, one really that good. one's really good that one uh you know what's really good in that one the ceviche oh yeah uh, the che ceviche de marisco ceviche de camarones it's really good and the Mexican food is also really good. And the Colombian food. Oh, everything. Yeah. Overall We've tried everything in that place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I never had a bad time in that place. Mm -hmm. So, again, this list is about places that we've... Except for the first one. Uh -huh. That has challenges. But, but the rest of these are places that we've, we've never had a bad time in. They're, they're good places. Yeah. You know, these are the places that we think about if we're nearby. We go, well, let's say they go to Flushing. Let's go to Queens. Let's go to yeah. in Manhattan. And then you can always go back. All right. So, that's El, El Patron. El Patron. All right. Now we go to Rico. Rico, that's my brother's Rico. spot. <laughs> it's in Sunnyside, uh, in uh, Queens and as this well. Is Rico, Rico's is R I K O. Yeah. Right, R I K O, Rico's. Rico's. It's on 46th Street and Greenpoint. 
So Rico's is a Peruvian restaurant and the food as well is always really good. Um, ceviche is really good because, you know, Peruvians are known yeah. for the ceviche and it's delicious for real. It's like another level. And also their plates with meat and, and fish, they're really yeah. good. They try to make it very fresh and that it doesn't have a lot of sauces or anything like that. It's, it, it's really good. And you can always have a good time because they do have live music. Oh, yeah. I've been there. So shout out to the guys that play the karaoke tracks yeah, and yeah. everything else because they always give me an opportunity to sing and they love it. Um, and they're very welcoming to everybody of that course, goes and the, there. And the, the uh, service is great. Yeah. They make you feel like you're coming to somebody's house. Exactly. It's yeah. almost like you're home. Yeah, yeah. So everybody knows you. Everybody is, is happy to see you. So that's a great place. And then we have Cafe Salamanca. Spanish restaurant. Cafe Salamanca is a Spanish restaurant in Northern Boulevard. That's where we had our wedding reception and it was great. Yeah, that place gives you a lot of food. Yes. You wanted me to teach you, right? <laughs> Hablando español, Carla. Okay, hablando, hablando, hablando español. I don't think you're ready to hablar español this time, Carla. I am ready. Nah, you're not. Yes, I am. So, how do you say... How do I say what? How do I say Colombia 1, 4 to 2? Kick USA's ass? No! <laughs> How do I say Costa Rica is beating Mexico right now? Yeah, Costa Zero Rica one? is going to beat Colombia on Tuesday <laughs> when we're going to go watch it. <laughs> How do you say toy? Toy, juguete. Juguete. Great. Toy. How do you say... Juguete. Now, just a funny thing about juguete. Juguete always throws me off because I think of jugo. Oh, really? Isn't that weird? So, jugo is juice. Yeah. But juguete is I toy. I mean, it's because it starts with the same Jugo kind of and juguete. Yeah. Uh, juice and toy. Jugo and juguete. That's not right. That's not fair. Why are they messing <laughs> with me? <laughs> How do you say... Yes. Figurine. Figurine? Uh, I would say like figura. Yes. It's like a figure. Yeah. Figura. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you say... Yes. Steak. How do I say steak? Uh, well, meat is carne. But steak... I think there is a word for steak. Is there is a word for steak. All right, so meat is carne. Yeah. Steak is what? Filete. Really? That's filet. Because... You can have a steak of fish and a steak of meat. And they say filete? Filete. Filete de carne. Filete, filete. de carne, filete de pescado. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Filete. How filete. do you say? Yes. Rice. Rice, arroz. Okay. And it's delicious. That is delicious, right? Yes. How do you say restaurant? Restaurant is rest restaurante. Yes. Um, how do you say when you were talking about um, the parts, the parts of the of the figure? You said that they have big joints. Joints. How do you say joints? Joints. Uh, damn. Like rodilla, mm -hmm. things like that. But it's not, it's not, we're talking about joints. A joint can be anything. It could be a joint on a... No, but let's an, talk an, about, an, let's talk about joints in, in a, in a body part. In the body. What I are don't know. joints? I don't know how to say joints. So it says <laughs> articulaciones. Articulaciones. But I think that Articulations. in Puerto Rico... I can I, see that. In Puerto Rico, I heard my grandmother say coyunturas. Coyunturas sounds crazy. But it's like... Coyuntura. Yeah. Coyunturas. All right. But articulaciones. Articulaciones m m sounds like it makes sense for a figure. Mm -hmm. Because they do say um, figures with five points of articulation. Oh, okay. Or, fifth, or ten points of articulation or fifteen. Like, they, yeah. they rate the figures by how many points of articulation they have how many yeah. joints so articulation that kind of makes sense 
Yeah. I like that. All right. Good. Uh, Good job, Carla. Yeah, of course. What else you got? <laughs> How do you say hands? Hands. Oh, we're going to do all the body parts? You can do this. Hands are manos. Good job. Yeah, and then I think the last one for me, how do you say legs? Legs? Uh, legs is piernas. Yes. All right. You have so any? The next one for me is how do you say arms? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do all the body parts now. Okay, that's good. Uh, arms is brazos. Head? Head is cabeza. Shoulders? Oh, no, my God. He really is going <laughs> through the whole body parts. Shoulders are hombros. Knees. Knees are rodillas. And toes. Toes <laughs> are pies. Huh? No, toes. Oh. Toes? Toes. Los dedos de los pies. Oh, that's right. I think we did this one already. Dedos de los pies. And we realized there's no toes in Spanish. It's dedos. I don't think we did it for the show, but I think we have discussed this already. Yeah. Yes. So head, we did heads, shoulders, shoulders. knees and toes. Yeah. Knees and toes. Knees and toes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We did that already. Knees and toes. Knees good. And toes. Yeah. Good job, Carla. Good okay, job. Good job. Oh have my. anything else? Oh, my God. Um, while we were talking about restaurants, we were talking about... Um, how do, you, how do you say, is there a word for cuisine or for like, well, I, I, I guess the cuisine, cuisine would probably fall into the word like sazon. No, mm. kind of. When we're describing like that they, that it's, it's got a good, because well, cuisine is a French word, I think. Yeah. I, th I thought originally thinking about cuisine that it was like cocina just cocina and right. then i just looked it up and it says cocina oh really so they're translated as uh, so cuisine is cocina. cocina but it might be like alta cocina or right. you know like in another level because right. when they use that word it's kind of like fancy so what do you think sazon is what's the definition of sazon 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 is, is flavor or spice yeah like like the flavor more than anything else because i i think that's um when like when people say french cuisine italian cuisine and then i'm thinking well when when we're saying spanish food and we're trying to say well this is more mexican this is more right you know it's got a certain flavor it's got a certain sazon following google translator it says seasoning says sazon is seasoning yeah okay so, sazon is basically, yeah, like the flavor, the seasoning. Right. Maybe it has to be a, a combination between the flavors and the different ingredients. Yeah. And that makes the sazon different from every country. Like like uh, when we went to the Spanish place versus the Colombian place, we had paella in two different places. Yeah. But, you know, you could see a little bit of difference in the, in the flavoring. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. Mm hmm um, and obviously in the presentation. Yeah, definitely. But, um, okay. Please do with that, Carla. Thank you so much for teaching me some Spanish. You're welcome. Go Colombia. Woohoo! All right. Another episode in the bag. That is right. All right. Uh, next episode is going to be episode 48. And we are going to be talking about a new and exciting political figure that... I have finally given in and started looking into, but you've been telling me about her for a long time, and her name is... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, we're going to talk about her. Cortez with a Z. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's exciting. She's a Latina politician. From the Bronx. From straight the Bronx. Straight from the Bronx, New Yorkian. Um, and she's bringing a lot of new ideas to the Democrat Party. Yeah. And it's it's just exciting to hear a new voice within the party uh, and and a new and a young voice. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about her. Yeah. If you guys want to prepare for that, just Google search. Her. <laughs> yeah. Later. <laughs> <laughs>